Hey everyone, welcome to my review of Soto Kamen Rider Saber, Book 1, Part 1. Soto! Saber is the fifth Rider series to get the Soto treatment, but is the first to be fully invaded by the line that came before it in its very first wave. Today, we'll be looking at this Saber portion of this set to find out what sets them apart from the figures that came before. Now, out of package, there are two boxes for each figure, filled with everything you'll need to complete them. There's a slight build process, but it's beginner-friendly and lets you get away with just pressing the hands out of the sprues. Both of these figures come packed with their weapons, an updated display stand, and sticker sheets. While stickers are an inherent part of the Soto experience, I want to take a moment to appreciate the amount of detail present before anything is applied. The heads are missing some obvious details, but there's plenty of paint and molded grooves to warrant a mostly sticker-free experience. Saber is molded in black and red, so all the whites, silvers, grays, and even red trim are done in paint. Blades has a similar setup, but he doesn't have the benefit of having two molded colors. To me, Blades is far more impressive, as there's gunmetal paint on the legs with white detail that, by all accounts, should have been done in stickers. The blue on his scarf pieces get a full coat of paint as well. They even went as far as painting the inside of the back skirt since it would be noticeable from the front. Oh, and the obvious one, the whole lion head in the front is painted. With that said though, they are looking a bit naked, so let's get some stickers. With these fully stickered up, we're feeling a lot more complete here. The paint matching on these stickers are done so well that sometimes it's hard to tell what's what. They even pick out smaller details like eyes, belts, and even gimmicks. The heads get a printed compound eye effect with a gradient. This was something that had been done in paint before in Zero One, but the level of detail required for the eyes this time could not be translated in that same fashion. Speaking of Zero One, there are improvements made to the base sculpt of these figures that really puts Zero One to shame. The protrusions on Zero One's head and legs are long gone with Saber. While the whole line isn't immune from these toy safety protrusions and holes, Saber managed to skirt the line and go on without them for this release. Another neat upgrade came with a look of the joints. The elbow and knee joints are covered with detail this time around. Sure, they're still there, but they stick out a lot less. The same goes for the shoulders, which sit closer to the body. This is an improvement made at the tail end of Zero One for Zero Two, but they made a point to bring that innovation here. The chest is sleeker as well, and it all comes down to how they handled the gimmick. Zero One had an armor and body setup. With Saber, he splits into thirds, so the chest can look a lot more lean. So far, there's not much to be done with the form changes here, but it's a good little teaser for what's to come. Let's move into articulation improvements. Alright, so this basically happens every year. Soto gets, you know, their, their big overhaul in terms of articulation. Uh, so Saber gets the lion's share of these new improvements. Uh, he has this very generous range of motion in the neck. Really appreciate that. Um, if you take a look at the original Zero One release, who is headless apparently, um, his neck range is like nothing. So it's really nice to have that, that range of motion. If you want, you got some flying poses there. Uh, then the next major improvement comes in the arms. Sure, you still get your standard like 360 swivel, but you get this awesome butterfly joint. Oh, that tends to happen a lot. Hold on. Yeah, just because of the gimmick, you know, the, the articulation is very strong in these arms and uh, <laughs> the connections are a little weaker, uh, but you do have this interesting butterfly joint. It is not your typical butterfly joint because uh, it is still just a peg and a hole. But uh, the peg is longer, and the hole is, well, I guess longer as well. Um, it's more oval-shaped, but uh, it, it gives you this benefit of this extra 
uh, butterfly range. And I thought, initially I thought this was going to like unseat itself so often. And I've been playing with it and they, they stick in really well. Um, so I don't know how it like fits in there properly, but it does. And I really like it. The implementation here is like really good. So you do have this awesome butterfly hinge and it is basically the same amount of pieces as zero one just having a peg in a hole except they changed up the tolerances and made it a butterfly joint i absolutely love that um this other arm here though uh it does have some troubles uh it all comes down to this flame effect like really clattering with the uh the shoulder pad um there's really no way around it. You're just going to have to move the shoulder pads separately. And it has the added benefit, you know, since it does clatter into the arm. Uh, you can pull it out a little more and you can get some extra range of motion out of that. But yeah, you do have your standard hinge and it is very generous. You have the swivel bicep as usual and you have a very, very deep elbow. Like... That is as deep as zero one one goes, and that is as deep as Saber goes. So, yeah, that's really nice. I mean, it's it's really only a few, a, uh, few degrees, but yeah. Anyway, uh, we move on into the hands, and these are now on eh, ball joints. Um, in practice, like, you get a little bit of tiltage out of them. Um, it's not too prominent, and they are, like, seated in there really far so you're gonna have to like pull out the joint to to really get it to you know emote but um hey at least it's there uh we expected this ever since care major just decided to start using ball joints and it's working out pretty well um we've got the standard swivel hip um so that's neat uh this is on a swivel technically uh it doesn't really matter here for saber but when you bring in blades uh he does have this front skirt here so i guess if you really wanted you could pose it sideways i don't know um blades also has this back skirt as well that clatters into all of this this for blades at least um really mucks up a lot of the articulation here so yeah anyway uh this is on a full you know full-on hinge situation and it has an extra uh three millimeter peg in the back there for the stand so you still have that um hmm this is not going back in hold on all right blades didn't want to behave so we're bringing back saber and that's fine since we do have to talk about this side skirt um it is on a really nice ball joint gets out of the way really well uh except here this does tend to like jostle around a little too often and come out hold on i'm telling you that happens a lot okay uh let's move into the legs and the thighs are on ball joints uh you get this much out forward this much back not too much because you know but uh and then this much out that way uh the forward range it is really hindered by uh this thigh joint or thigh armor but if you turn it out of the way, you know, you get a little bit more. I appreciate it. And you can move the, the foot to compensate. Uh, we have, a, once again, a very generous knee joint and then a ball joint here at the feet. Oh, right. And then thigh swivel. But I guess I already showed that off. Anyway, these are really nice. But this is not the only thing that got improved articulation. All right, so this one, this is the brand new display base, and this is just the regular display base. And it does get a tiny bit, a tiny, tiny bit of extra range of motion here in the, the ball joint. Um, you know, it can tilt a little further. Uh, so that's really nice. Here, you know, about the same. Uh, I genuinely did not know where else to put this. Uh, I'm bringing this in just because, hey, we have pegs here now, and you can connect them into, uh, they are three, three millimeter compatible, so you can, in perpetuity, start stacking all of these stands together. Uh, so that's, that's like just the major thing that they wanted to show off. Also, 
um, all the ball joints sort of just fit in um, and they are sized properly. These are not, once again, these are not the same display stands. Anyway, that's it for articulation. I guess we're ending here. So with all that said, is it worth it? Well, you found yourself watching a Soto review on a channel called Soto Pop. What do you think I'm going to say? It's garbage. Throw it in the trash. Nah, I mean, this is 100% worth it. Yeah, I'm very biased when it comes to this line, but my excitement comes with good reason. Every year we get a major improvement to Soto, and this year is no exception. The ball joints in the hands and the new draw joints are just evidence that this line will not stop improving itself. In recent years, there's been what's called a Dai Soto or Kai Soto re-release of the main riders with improved paint and articulation. But this year, they were so confident in what they had that they put an end to those re-releases. These figures need no improvement. All of that goes into these figures, from the gimmick engineering, articulation, paint, and stickers. And while we're here, stickers are absolutely a part of the Soto experience, and they have an artistry to them in their own right. However, there's something to be said about a half-stickered experience. Figures at this scale and price point never went into as much detail as these figures have. In a sense, they're pushing the boundaries of what's expected out of a candy toy line. I'll remind you that the belt details are only a recent occurrence, happening as early as Daisoto build, but really only prominent during Geo's run. Standard DX toys don't even give you the option of that detail. You can make these figures as DX or as premium as you'd like while still being fun action figures at the end of the day. In short, I'm blown away by the value of these figures. These two are good representation of what Candy Toy is capable of for this year. But that's not all that comes in this set. Like I said, this is part one of a two-part review. Tune in sometime in the future to get the rest of this set, uh, because there is a whole lot to talk about when it comes to Soto and what these figures mean for the rest of the line. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you liked this episode, hit that like button and subscribe if you want to hear more from us each week. Tell me in the comments down below, did this convince you to purchase these? Do you already have them? Are you excited about these? Also, hey, while you're down there, there are still links in the description down below to how you can help support the Black Lives Matter movement by donating money, signing petitions, whatever you do as long as you do it, it absolutely helps. There is also a link to a playlist in there and at the end card of this video that has a bunch of videos that donate their ad revenue to the Black Lives Matter movement. So click through that playlist if you'd like. Anyways guys, thanks for watching. Keep it.